free racing pigeon tips and lots of info, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, look at the links and email below. The Pigeon's Wing Sprint, Middle, Long Distance Racing What we must remember is that the velocity of a particular race will also have a bearing on the winners as will the wind which is why so much must be taken into account when you are preparing pigeons for sprint, middle or long distance races. Why should this be, well on a hard day with the Vels? Dropping to 1000 UPM we generally find that the fanciers who do well in the longer events are higher up the result sheet? That makes a big difference to the way we pair the pigeons, that is why we should be very selective with our choice. We must never make the mistake of rating a pigeon as an all-rounder on the strength of one win in the longer events if it has a proven track record on land but never raced across. If you do class a pigeon as an all-rounder then you must take into account the vels on the day as well as the distance. It is a fact that some fanciers will not put a pigeon into a channel race that has a good track record in the land races. This is wise because the pigeon is only built for sprint races in the first place and the wing theory will tell you that this pigeon is not going to make the distance. So what have we picked up so far with the wing theory? The main point being consideration to the conditions of the day. I remember winning a 120 milliliters race when I was working at Foden Trucks at Sandbach. Every lunchtime we would sit around and have an inquiry about all sorts of things. One Monday in the early days I went in as pleased as punch because I had won the race on the Saturday. That was until the late George Stubbs pulled me up saying that you cannot class a pigeon as being good after winning in a tailwind. Which brings us back to the wing theory and which wing suits which distance. Because no matter how much the comment hurt at the time he was right and it makes you wonder just how much some of the top fanciers actually know and keep it to themselves. Picture 1. Dark Hen winner of prizes to nearly 500 MLS and has been twice second your. This is a full wing to race the middle distance where the strength of both the full wing and the strong flights easily propel the bird forward. Take note of the full back wing and also the width of the flights right through the wing. The end flights become slightly shorter for the middle distance pigeon. Picture. 2. Is a sprint wing and when the pigeon was tested at 300 mls he took rather longer to come home and has not seen a channel race since. However, when you send a pigeon across the water it that is not suited to ant distance it does take it out of the bird for future sprint events. But for the sprint races this cock gained positions including second fed. On my travels I have found that this is generally the type of wing that picks up speed. If you look at the wing of the Sparrowhawk you will notice that the back wing is very small and even the primary flights taper off much more quickly than most other members of the bird family. Take note that the primary flights become proportionally longer for the sprint pigeon compared to the middle and long distance birds. Picture 3 this is a wing that will put any bird up amongst the winners up to 400 to 450 MLS but will hen drop away. This cock has won prizes in club, fed and classic up to 410 MLS. It has a good back wing that is slightly bigger than the out and out sprinters and will race in any velocity. Notice the step up from primary 7 to 8 and also the slight gaps between the end 4 flights. This can be found in the sprint and middle distance pigeons. Picture 4. Picture 4. The wing of the out and out distance pigeon which has a complete full back wing to make flight that much easier for the bird to stay in the air for long periods of time. This type of pigeon does not have to put in the same number of wing beats to cover the distance when they have a long journey. If you look at the birds that soar high above in search of food such as the eagles, vultures, and buzzards etc. they all have big back wings which effectively keeps their use of energy to a minimum. When you look at the birds that fly long distances in migration they all have big back wings in comparison to their body. In the pigeon world we have fanciers who have a preference to distance racing and they breed for that purpose which leads to this type of full wing. Pigeons, like birds that are migrating know that geologically they have a big task ahead of them with the distance that they have to cover and therefore they do not put all the energy into the faster wing beat. The problem that the pigeon has with flight is that it is a high cost of energy, which is why the sprinter who puts in the faster wing beats cannot cover the longer distance races. I was once in conversation with a local fancier about one of his pigeons and the wing theory and the term came up chicken wing and that proved to be his best 500 milliliters pigeon, again the full back wing that a pigeon needs to cover greater distances. There are many fanciers who would like to race from the longer race points but very rarely get the birds home. The reason for that is, they are racing their birds in the shorter events and breeding off those that get amongst the prize winners but for the longer races you have to be a for more patient if you are going to get into the big league. Now what happens with the fanciers who successfully race the distance is they are selective with their breeding and only breed from the pigeons who have set a standard of racing which will lead to success in the longer events. The steady pigeon that has the breeding will always come through. There are odd occasions when the distance pigeon will produce a sprint to middle distance pigeon and when this arises and you look back through the breeding you will see that this has happened before and therefore a throwback.
These throwback pigeons will not necessarily produce the distance pigeon even though they have come from the distance pigeon in the first place. This is where you get the all-distance loft coming into its own. One thing always infuriates me when you go to the pigeon shows and there is a competition on selection of wings for what distance. In the first place I have no idea who takes the pigeon's picture of the wings but they should learn how a bird uses its wing before they take the next one, then take the photo and ask the question. Taking a photo of a wing that is being stretched out to put it in its full context is about as useful as a chocolate fire guard in a nursery, if you are going to do it get it right and there is no danger of misinterpretation. Always remember that at the end of the day the fanciers must know what they are doing or else you will not get anywhere. Knowledge is helpful but not what we need to win the race. What does matter is how you put that knowledge into use. Many reasons to buy my racing pigeon method. Here are some of the best reasons. You will get excellent results, it's a very simple system to use, it's affordable, I have had over 400 first prize winners, it's adaptable to any situation. You can use it with any racing method, natural, widowhood, young birds, it's a very effective method. There is no need to spend a lot of money on fancy pigeon products, it's a reliable system and it is foolproof to use. Professional athletes, race horses, take the same products, there is science behind this not just hearsay, it is all to do with red blood cells and oxygen in the blood, without that a pigeon will not race well, or an athlete will not win a race, if he has low oxygen in his blood, the above is fact and is 100% science. There are a few things you can do to improve your chances of winning at racing pigeons. One of the most important things is to learn as much as you can about the sport. You'll need to know the different types of pigeons, how to train them, and how to race them. Another key factor is practice. You'll need to be able to fly your pigeons competently in order to win races. And, of course, you'll need to have the funds to invest in racing pigeons and other racing equipment. free racing pigeon tips and lots of info, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, look at the links and email below. There are many reasons to buy my racing pigeon method. Here are some of the best reasons. You will get excellent results, it's a very simple system to use, it's affordable, I have had over 400 first prize winners, it's adaptable to any situation. You can use it with any racing method, natural, widowhood, young birds, it's a very effective method. There is no need to spend a lot of money on fancy pigeon products, it's a reliable system and it is foolproof to use. Professional athletes, race horses, take the same products, there is science behind this not just hearsay, it is all to do with red blood cells and oxygen in the blood, without that a pigeon will not race well, or an athlete will not win a race, if he has low oxygen in his blood, the above is fact and is 100% science. There are a few things you can do to improve your chances of winning at racing pigeons. One of the most important things is to learn as much as you can about the sport. You'll need to know the different types of pigeons, how to train them, and how to race them. Another key factor is practice. You'll need to be able to fly your pigeons competently in order to win races. And, of course, you'll need to have the funds to invest in racing pigeons and other racing equipment. free racing pigeon tips and lots of info, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, look at the links and email below.